Welcome to Profit Farming with Mary Ikegu and today we are going to do an Azola pod together. So with this Azola pod, we are making it for growing Azola for commercial purposes. That is for giving to chicken, cows, uh, goats and even for selling. So if you want seed, Azola seeds, we can provide them to you. Now, for you to make an Azola pod, you need to identify the, the best location. And the best location in our case is somewhere that it is going to get at least 50% sunlight. The reason you don't want to get 100% sunlight or direct sunlight, it's because when you give it direct sunlight, the azola tends to turn brown or brick red. And in this case, it is not uh, nutritious as it should be because in its ideal color, it should be green. Okay, so that is why you need to provide at least 50% of sunlight. The way you can achieve this is by selecting somewhere under a tree, somewhere that it is going to get at least either the morning sunlight or the afternoon sunlight. So that will be a good place to use for Azola pod. Now, the next thing that you can do to provide 50% sunlight is to provide artificial shade. Like you do a shade net or maybe you do it in a greenhouse. In fact, those people that do Azola in a greenhouse, it is the most ideal. But that doesn't mean that you cannot grow your Azola in the open field. You can, but you should provide that shade. Now, the first step after you have identified your location is to now dig the pod and no, you first determine how long do you want your pod to be. In our case, ours is, is 8 meters long, 2 meters wide. Step 2 is to dig your pod. So we have already dug our pod and after you dig your pod, make sure that you align it. And how do you do this? Ensure that you remove any debris inside that might poke or tear up your paper and reduce its lifespan. When you're selecting the dam liner, you select a dam liner that is 1 mm gauge, gauge of 1 mm or 0.75. So that is the thickest is 1 mm, then it is followed by 0.75 and then it is followed by 0.5 mm. Now between these, the difference is how long they are going to be lasting for you. For the thickest, that is 1 mm, it is going to last for at least 10 to 30 years. And then for the 0 0.5, it is going to last for at least 10 years. So depending on the amount of money you want to invest in your pod, you can choose between these. The other option that you have for the papers is a construction paper. Now, a construction paper is cheaper than these dam liners, these uh, HDPE dam liners, because it is used, uh, it is used, uh, it uses PVC materials, and then this PVC is going to be breaking uh, under direct sunlight. It is going to take you at least six months, six to one month, six months to one year. So the best option is the dam liner. But if you are not going to expose your pond for, you know, the direct sun to the direct sunlight, then you can use that construction one. And also, if you're doing this as a test to see how your animals are going to be behaving, that is why uh, you're going to use a small pod, then you can use that construction paper. But if you're using it for commercial purposes and you want it to last longer, the dam liner is the best. Those ones made of HDPE. Okay? Yes. Then, after now you have laid your paper, you have dug and now you have laid your paper, it's time to add your manure. Now, for the manure, it will depend on the size of the pod. In our case, we have a pod uh, that is 8 meters long, 2 meters wide. For this, we have used 8 buckets of manure. This is enough that is going to last us for at least six months. And because we have started it in July, it is going to be uh, in this pod up until December. So you put your manure that is depending on the size, you put that is well, manure that is enough for that. The next thing 
is to now add water. Now, there's something I've forgotten to say. When you're adding your manure, make sure that it is decomposed manure. Because some people use uh, wet, 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 wet manure that is been uh, pooped or, yeah, you know, from the cow sheds directly. But it is it is ideal, it is ideal, but the best is the decomposed one because the urine will have dried. You see, the urine will have dried and therefore you are not exposing your azola, which is very delicate, to high amounts of ammonia. So that is the reason. So make sure that your manure is well decomposed. Then after you have added the manure, it's now time to add water. Now, the level of the manure you can also determine by uh, checking how far it has gone. It should be at least one inch, one inch, one to two inches from the bottom of the pod. Now, after you have added your manure, add water, which should go higher than the manure. Uh, it should be at least one foot, you know, one foot, so that you could provide room for the azola to grow. And also, you need to be floating on the water and also for the, you know, to separate it from the manure to make sure that your manure, your azola, when you are harvesting, it is going to be clean. You don't want to be feeding your animals with manure. Yes, although you can clean it afterwards. So the next step is to now plant your seeds. The right amount for this pod is four kilograms of azola but in our case we used two kilograms of azola however now the 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 challenge is that it will grow but if you use 4 kg it is going to fill the pod faster seminar chemistry surface area to volume ratio so if you're looking forward into making an azola pod you can follow these steps and if you want your azola pod to fill faster you can use more seeds so that's basic the basics those are the basics of making an azola pod and planting the azola seeds if you have any questions you can drop them in the comment section i will be able to answer for you if you want seeds you can just also comment in the you know comment section below and we will plan how you can receive your seeds if you also want to continue with the discussion ask any question about azola how it's going to affect your animals or how it's going to increase your productivity for poultry farmers comment below and uh, i will be able to answer all your concerns so in the meantime we are going to be waiting for 14 days for this pod to multiply and i will be here to give you an update of how it is moving forward thank you so much for watching remember to subscribe like the video tell me what you think about azola have you used azola before have you heard about it what is your experience with Azola? And I will be uh, happy to engage with you in the comment section. So let's continue discussing in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye bye.